What's up everybody and thank you so much for joining me back into Man and Lords. My name is Axfield and we currently are on the second episode as we look at the pre-release for Man and Lords and the early access game is going to come out on the 26th of April but I'm going to use this playthrough as a showcase for you to show you how the game looks. It looks, looks absolutely beautiful, it's actually stunning. You know, just being able to be in a third person mode while you're playing a city builder game and having this type of visuals it's really amazing but i'm going to show you also the, all the mechanics and the features that comes with the game so that when the game does come that you'll be prepared and you can just jump into it so if you're new to the channel and you like city builders builders crafting and survival please do remember to subscribe as well as press the bell notification so that you may stay updated all right so here we can see uh these bandits on their way here to our town so they're looking to pillage our town so we're gonna just say track their movements just to make sure that we are well prepared when they do come now currently i've only got the spear militia so what i'm going to have to do to get more soldiers the first thing i can do is set up my manor that will give me access to the lord's retinue and then from there we can also get archers maybe now i'm going to have to import uh, my my bow and arrows because we're not going to produce it for quite some time so I am going to have to import that. But in any case, we've got a forager over here. We've got a hunting zone and the foraging zone over there. And yeah, I want to actually extend this road up here towards this side. And then I want to start uh, start right away with my farming. So let's extend it upwards. So that we can get the farming going. Right, so... I do have all the houses occupied, so it's also time to look at adding more houses here. So let's maybe go ahead and place another house over here like so. I think I'm going to make it a pretty big plot. Here we go. Oh, we can actually squeeze two houses in there. Yeah, why not? Let's do it like so. Okay, now I do want to unlock my, my second tab that I do want to unlock here uh, by the, the tech tree is I want to get the orchard tree. So let's just see what we need for that. Okay, we need two burgage plots that's at level two. So you know what? Let's just see what we need here. We need... Um, let's see. Oh, we need clothing. Okay. So I'm going to build up my, my funds a little bit. So what we can do, for well, first clothing we can do leather. Now we're going to need a bunch of goats just to build up our leather supply. We do not have sufficient hunting grounds here to produce the leather that we need. We do have 17 hides in storage at the moment, but it's not sufficient enough. So currently at the trading post, let's just see what we are going to sell. Okay, I can take this off of the export. We're not going to export anything there anymore. So I do want to start uh, exporting my planks. At the moment, the only thing that I am exporting is my firewood. So yeah, I'm going to definitely need some more things that I can export. Okay, well, let's maybe double up on the firewood production. Because that's the only thing that we can do at the moment. I can see I've pretty much chopped off all the trees here, so I'm going to most likely I have to get a forager up here as well and the stone cutter camp is done here so I can actually break this building down I'm not going to use that anymore we've collected all the stones that we can now a good idea would be actually to expand the town towards this side because we've got our marketplaces here so it's not a bad idea to actually grow the town towards this side so you want all the town all the Burgage plots to be close to the marketplace. And I think we can maybe also then 
on a later stage set up the tavern on this side. Okay. Well, in any case, let's set up the forager. Oh, sorry, the forester. Not the forager. We do have a forager. But we're going to set the forester up on this side. There we go. And we're going to just put it into fast forward mode. And let's just set up our farmhouse right over here like so. Okay, so I intend to place my crop fields out towards this direction. So I'm going to just extend the road a long way down. Here we go. Now the crop fields, in order for you to make it worth your while, you're going to have to make it very big. Now they've got a measurement which they call Morgan. <laughs> I don't know what measurement Morgan is. I'm assuming hectares. It's probably hectares. So yeah. Let's start off by pulling it across like so. So I found that if you put, make it about one Morgan size, then it actually makes it worth your while. So you want to make sure that all your crop fields are at least one Morgan in size. Let's just extend it a bit more to the top. Uh, and I have to go a little bit further up. There we go. All right, so that's one Morgan. We're going to just go ahead and plop that down. And I'm going to do three here. And I'm going to explain to you why I'm doing the three crop plots. It's another one, Morgan. Uh, so let's just do one more. Okay, perfect. So the crop fields, they'd go into a rotation of three years. So what I like to do is I would like to rotate the crops, obviously, every year. But then I want to have enough crop fields so that every year there is something growing. So I'm going to show you how I do the layout. So for example, I would place one for wheat, one for barley, and then one to fallow. Actually, you know what? I'm going to actually do the flax. I'm not going to worry about the barley for now yet. So we're going to do the wheat, the flax, and then the fallow. Then for the next one, I'm going to rotate it. Then I'm going to say flax and fallow and then wheat. And then we're going to proceed to this one, which is going to be fallow first, and then the wheat, and then the flax. I just want to see, is that correct? Yeah. All right. So you see, this is what I mean by having the three crop fields. You've got always something growing at any given time of the year. So we've got the wheat here, got the flax, and then we've got one fallow. And then we'll rotate between the three crops. All right, but let's just fast forward that. I've got another extra space here for someone to move in. And I think while we're at it, let's add another burgage plot over here. Let's take it maybe a little bit further so that we've got some space to work here. And maybe just put a chicken coop up there. Right, so I think the f the crop fields are a little bit far from town, but uh, yeah, hopefully it's not too far for them to make it uh, effective, you know. So I'm thinking I can actually do, place my mana over here and extend it towards this side. And we can maybe place... The first uh, building for the manor we can place here. So the manor consists of multiple buildings. So we're going to first have the main house. If I could call it like that. I'm going to just plop it down here I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do that. So you can see here we've got the walls. And then we've got the tower. Or oh, well, it's an outer tower actually. But we've got the garrison tower which form part of main buildings. And then we've also got the tax office. So I'm going to start by just placing the main building. And then also the tax office. But let's commit to this building. This will just enable us to get the Lord's retinue. Alright, so my forest is up here. So we're going to just let them start planting trees right over here like so. Alright. 
right, and we've got a good amount of berries growing here currently in the forest. And it also looks like the wildlife is spawning in again. All right, so let's start maybe by assigning three families. Okay. It's a pretty big crop field, so you want to make sure that you've got enough families working here. Now, my intention is to focus my development more on the farming side, which is the top part here. So definitely first the orchard tree I want to set up and then the heavy plow and then we're going to take it further from there. Okay, so let's just see here. Okay, I'm going to have to build my money up a little bit more. How much do we need to open up the plank imports? Uh, okay, we need 21 coin. It's not too bad. We're getting close to that amount. Let's just see here. I want to bring the firewood a little bit further down the amount here. Just want to get that amount, man. Just so that we can open up the trade for the planks and then I can add the goats to my to my uh, burgage plot here. So here you can see the people are starting to work the crop fields. Actually looks so nice. So once I've got the heavy plow unlocked, I can also assign oxen here to help plow the grounds. So that's going to really come in handy. But now my intention is to maybe extend crop fields towards this side as well. Also three going out this way. And then we can maybe do smaller ones in between. Alright, so I've got enough coin now um, to open up the trade route for the planks. So happy about that one. Okay, so exports. And I'll export the planks when we get maybe to... Let's maybe push it up to 30. And I'm going to also step up my... My plank sawing game here. Now for some reason there was nobody working here, I don't know why. But in any case... Yeah, let's just set up a few more extra houses over here. What's the food looking currently? Oh, the foods are not too bad. We've got plenty of berries, so that will sustain us for some time. There we go. Right, so you can see here the forest uh, is really effective actually to get the trees up and going. So the trees grow surprisingly fast here. And you can see the logging camps already utilizing the forester. Now that's great, that's really what I want. Because these trees <laughs> that surround the outer parts of the city, they're not really bothering me. And it's a far distance to walk here for, for the logging camp. So it's just good to have the forest up there. Alright, so my intention is to change this burgage plot to an orchardry. And uh, we're going to do that very soon. I just want to build up my money for now. Let's see, okay, I've got, got so much stone. 180 stone. Ok, 
Okay, let's maybe just set this to export. I'm going to just bring it down to 150. And that's going to be nice just to get the initial coin. Uh, so that we can also build, uh, what do you call it, the, the goat sheds. And then from there we'll be able to produce our leather. Which then in return will allow us to upgrade the burgage plot to the second level. Okay, for now I'm going to just assign four families here to work the crop fields. I think that should be sufficient. And let's maybe see to add the tannery. I think I'm going to maybe place... It fits in so nicely here. Yeah, you know, maybe we should do that. Let's just place the tannery right over there. Now I'm going to bring this road around. And we're going to just kind of like form another circle right over here. Which is going to be on the outside of the manor. Here we go. Yeah. That's good. Okay, so our manor is set up. So we've also got access now to the Lord's retinue. It's only five soldiers, but they are very strong. With that being said so what's nice about the lord's retinue is you can really customize them exactly to the way you want so i'm gonna what i'm going to do is i'm gonna make them all red right okay so that is our colors so we don't want to make sure that they white and red maybe we're gonna use that combo well, let's see what we can do here i like the chain mail it just makes them seem so much tougher i really don't know if it makes any difference but let's do the proper chain mail. Yeah, I like that. Okay, let's go for that one. And then we've got a sh guy with a shield over here. Let's just change all these colors. Agreed. Okay. Sorted. Okay, this little hammer. Can't see that doing much damage. So, yeah. We're going to definitely go with the sword. And I like this shield. Yeah, that works for me. And the body and the head, everything seems fine. The rest of it. Okay. This guy, okay, we got also the same. Let's maybe give this one a different shield. Let's do it like that. Body. And then we're going to also give him a sword. Yeah. Uh, the hammer story doesn't, I don't know, that doesn't work for me. So I'm going to just give them proper swords. And uh, an axe actually might work. Let's do one axe, man. Yeah, we're going to leave the axe there. There we go. Right, let's just choose all the colors. That's very good. Okay, good stuff. You are kitted out. And then our last one. Let's do... Yeah, well, I suppose we can do another X-Men. Why not? just see here what we can do uh i'm gonna just keep on keep going with the chain mail and there we are okay that's good okay so all our guys are kitted out they really do look ready for battle nice okay so i'm i'm, I'm happy with the retinue Right, so we've also got that additional coin now, which will enable us to set up our first coach head. Let's do that. And our tannery is up. Nice. Okay, so we start going to start to produce our first leather. 
And once I've got enough coin, I'm going to open up another trade route to start exporting the leather. That's going to be a nice commodity to export. All right, I've got to also just keep an eye here on my crops. So I do want to get a, a windmill up here as well. So I've got 97% efficiency here, so... I think it's a good spot to just keep the mill. We're going to pop it right over there. And let's maybe just add a communal oven also. And we should get a decent amount uh, of grain here from our first harvest. Because the fertility is pretty good. Okay, but the trading is definitely go, going better now. I want to actually push this up again. Let's just take this up to 40. I don't want to run out of firewood. And I want to make sure there's enough firewood in the town all around. Planks at 30. Yeah, I think we're going to leave that for now. So we've got the goat shed. I think we can do some additional chicken coops as well. Let's do maybe just another goat sheet over here. And one more chicken coop. Okay, then I'm going to set up the trading for the leather. The leather is very a good commodity to trade with. We get six coin for every piece of leather that we trade. So that's really nice. Okay, this is good. Yeah, so let's set up the, the leather. Export. And I want to make sure that I've got enough leather in my stocks. Or in my surplus. And then, yeah. But that's going to be nice. <laughs> We're going to get really good money from that. And then with the money that I'm getting from uh, the leather, I'm going to use that then to get myself war bows. Because uh, we're going to get invaded within 220 days. So we want to be well prepared. Let's maybe see to upgrade some of these burgage plots. Yeah, I've got plenty of timber. We need only two level 2 burgage plots. So let's do that. I'm going to upgrade these two right here by the marketplace. Now I think a good place for... The tavern would be on this side, right over here. It's well spaced between all the homes, and I think they'll be able to access it easily. I'll place it more or less like that. So it's also close to the manor house, so if the king decides he wants a drink, then he can just walk down the road like a real king and grab himself a beer. Just place my tax office here. Right. Here we go. Let's commit to that. Oh, and by the way, that's the best way to build your mana. You can build all the pieces at the same time. But if you... Oh, let me just see here. Okay, I can't select it now. But you can go to the castle plan and you can pretty much lay out everything that you want to. But if you don't have the material, you can't commit to the building. So that's why I just do it bit by bit. Okay, so we've got our first burgage plot that's upgraded here. You can see it's more like a tiled roof that they've got. And the structure of the building around the side it just looks a little bit more solid compared to the level 1 house. And uh, yeah, we're going to just unlock the second development tree now. Or the second level for the development tree. There we go. Right, so I'm going to jump right in and set up the orchard tree. Now the orchard tree is quite expensive. You need 50 coin to set up your orchard tree. So it is quite a bit of coin, but you do get a big yield, especially if you build it on a plot like this one. So that is what I intend to do. 
is to set up my orchard tree right over here. And I think what will also be good, maybe, if I place a burgage plot right over here, like so, I'm going to do a really long one. Let's maybe just do it up to this point. Here we go. Yeah, so this will also give us a nice amount of orchards that we can utilize. So I'm going to do maybe three houses like, like I'm placing this one. And just do orchards and maybe vegetables as well. So what's really interesting about a mana lords is that your burgage plots, everything revolves around your burgage plot. So there's so much production that's going on on the burgage plots and then also once you get to the second level burgage plot, you can utilize it for so much more. So you can see here, I can pretty much, I can get my blacksmith up, my brewery, tailor workshop, cobbler's workshop joiner's workshop and a, a boyer's workshop so this they build a little building here in the backyard and then they do all the production from the backyard so yeah it's quite interesting it's very different from what i'm used to playing in city builders you've got a building for everything now of course we do have the communal buildings like we've got the windmill and we've got the communal oven and all that but a lot of the production is going on at the actual houses. So now I'm going to just assign a family here to the windmill as well as the communal oven. Because they're going to start harvesting the crops pretty soon. See it really looks beautiful at this stage. Absolutely stunning. Okay. So we've got a good yield there. Uh, we've got two more spaces for families here to move in. And I see I've got 56 coins. So I want to just maybe immediately go ahead and place my apple orchard. Yeah, so they're going to use this space here for the orchards. And then once my money has climbed up a bit again, I think then it's going to be time to to get our bows, you know. The days goes by quite slowly, so it's it's not that big of a train smash. You've got a lot of time to prepare for your first attack, which takes two years. So you don't have to stress too much about uh, the bandits coming in and just say catching you off guard, you know. Yeah, let's do another chicken coop maybe over here, like so. And we can expand the residential area. I just want to keep a couple of goat sheds out um, so that our leather production or our hide production is sufficient because I want the, the leather to be my main trading commodity at this stage so we need to make sure that we've got the goat sheds going as I've mentioned the hunting spots that you get is simply not enough uh, the wild animals they don't respawn fast enough so you simply don't get the hides that you need not, you don't even get the meat that you need for that matter. So I think only if you get a rich wild animal spot. I think only then will it be like worth it. But we do keep it there as an extra. Alright so there you can see. We've got a decent amount of wheat. I think we didn't get as big of a yield because we planted the or started the crop fields a little bit late in the year. But it's a decent amount, I think, for the first one. Oh, 
All right, so my next step is going to be to start importing the war bows. I really think I need to get that going. Import and... Yeah, I don't know. Let's maybe just do one at a time for now. And I'm going to set up myself another uh, battalion. So you're going to press the plus button here and I'm going to choose the archer militia. Here we go. Now the archers are super effective against infantry. The only problem is that they are terrible at hand-to-hand -hand combat. Combat. So if the bandits get too close to them, the melee, melee units, then they're going to have a problem fighting them off. So you must make sure that you always keep them at range. Alright, here they're starting with the second here for the crop fields. Oh man. I didn't do this right. Wait, actually. The road can fit through here. Okay, that's perfect. Okay, so I'm going to extend the crop fields towards this side. Make it pretty much the same as what I've done with these ones. Now, on this side, I'm going to do barley. Just move it a little bit closer. We're going to have barley production going on this side. Alright, so just one more. And then we are good to go. Oops. Yeah, let's leave it like that. Why not? That's fine. Okay. So first one, we're going to select the barley. And we're going to do the rotation between the barley and the wheat. So let's do first barley, wheat, fallow. Wheat, fallow, barley. And then it's fallow. It's a bit of wheat first. No, barley first. Barley and then wheat. I just want to see if I structured that correctly. Okay, that should be fine. Okay. So I think I'm going to also add another family maybe here to the farmhouse. Alright, so they can start working the lands over here. Okay, you can see the coin is really stepping up now because we're trading the leather. And let's maybe push this up to four bows. Here we go. Yeah, so I'm going to maybe just do a few chickens and okay, let's do one more goat shed. Okay, great. Right, so I think I'm sorted now for the goat sheds, <laughs> that's for sure. We're just waiting for those first bows to come in. Oh, there we go. We've got our first four war bows. So that will just equip our militia.
think once I've got 20 militia archers, I think that should be sufficient enough for our first attack, or the first raid. So I'm going to just let it keep on building up until we get to that point. I still want to uh, com continue to add to my burgage plots over here. The orchards takes a long time to grow, you see that's a thing. It takes three years to reach maturity, so you want to get that set up pretty quickly if you can. And let's do some more vegetables. There we go. Okay, so you can see that we the money is going very well. We're importing all those bows and um, upgrading all these plots. So leather is a real great commodity. You just build a whole bunch of goat sheds and then you can really get a nice leather production going. I'm also going to utilize the sheep to its max potential uh, once we've got the sheep farms going because the sheep it does cost you quite a bit of coin initially but you get an endless amount of wool and that really helps you to which you can you can use that wool obviously then to also export because you can just create a, an abundance of that. So far everything's looking good. We've got currently seven militia archers. And yeah, yeah, we're gonna just build it up from there. And just checking. See if there's something else. Oh, I do need to add the weaver. Because we've got that additional flax laying there. You know what? Let's before we build the weaver weaver's huts, let's first build ourselves a sheep farm. Now what I'm thinking of doing is to make maybe place the sheep farm right over here. Yeah, let's do that. And we're going to create a pasture where the sheep can roam. I want to do a pretty big one. I think if we can do it more or less like this. There we go. Yeah, this is a decent size, so they can, I can keep up to 40 sheep in this pasture over here. Yeah, I like that. Right, we've got our bread production going over here. I think we already used... Oh, we still got some flour left. So we should be able to produce a couple of more breads. I think let's maybe assign another family here. They do work pretty slow here by the communal oven. Okay, but you can see here, this is the first two homes that we've upgraded to level 2. And they do look a lot nicer compared to the level 1 burgage plots. But in any case guys, that's it from me for this episode. Within the next episode, we're going to definitely be ready for the raiders coming in. And uh, I'm still building up the army over here. But we're going to take them on and uh, yeah, I think it's going to be an awesome battle. So generally they come with anything between 30 and 40 raiders. But thank you guys for watching. And then I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.